And then after that, process A actually exited the table. Uh, all right, okay. Wherever there is this second analysis process B, we try to swap the data. Right again, okay. Uh, uh, let us set up an example. Okay, although you can see right, two processes A and B, and of course the message one B, the one actually uh, try to attack or uh, exploit process A, notice that actually process A can also be run by the same malicious user. Okay, that means process A, or program A is made available in the system. Malicious user, say Bob, runs program A, import program A, then process A is running, then at the same time, Bob then we still try to actually exploit this one another process. Yeah? So you can see the, the second here. Okay. Uh, so right? Why is it that there is this space between process A and B? Okay, uh, in a way that actually if B manages to complete the swapping, right, before A accesses the data, then the attack succeed. So there's this requirement that actually the swapping needs to be done in between time of check and time of review. After the checking is done, okay, but before the data is accessed, okay, then B needs to actually complete the attack. And then if that's the case, the attack succeeds, and uh, the analysis user so called wins the risk. Wins the risk. Yeah? Again, it is called time of attack and time of use. So, uh, well, diagrammatically, I can illustrate the attack, uh, all the important timelines. Uh, in fact, uh, the two objects involved in this diagram. Okay? Honorable process, manager process. Okay? This is a timeline. I have two parts. One is sensitive, the other one is not sensitive. Right? Okay. First operation, time of check. Okay? That means process A, check whether part B can be read. Answer is a non sensitive file, check is alright, good, can be read. But before the file is accessed, right? Problem B here, change pointer P to point to a sensitive system file itself. So pointer P can change here, now P points to this sensitive file, and guess what? Later on, at the time of use, when file is read by process A, yeah, this sensitive file will be read itself. Okay. And of course, uh, when Bob runs these two processors, and then Bob can actually access the sensitive part. That's the goal of, of, of this attack. Anyway. Right? Okay, uh, to be clearer, okay, uh, let's talk about all the three important events and actions. Time of check, right? Uh, done by this process A. Again, this time, at the point of time, pointer point to non sensitive part. Sounds oh, good. And then this attack, changing of pointer, where then P points to sensitive part. Then lastly, time of use, where then uh, sensitive part get access. Yeah? Time of check, POC, POU, uh, I like to call this second one POA, uh, time of attack. So time of attack is in between the time of check and time of use. Okay? That's a, Okay, let me give you a uh, complete scenario. How can this attack, how can such an attack actually exploit other program? Uh, this is a variant of an example given in, in this uh, CWE. Alright, so let's say that this set your only program. You, you have learned about this set your program, that means uh, uh, this program will run with the basic dividend. Yeah, so it's a set your only root. That means uh, root access will be given. And then there's this access system call. Access system call. Okay, uh, there's this file. Check whether the user executing the program has permission to write to the file app. That means whether write can be done on app. Okay? Strangely, the return, uh, the, uh, return is zero if the process has the permission. So zero means uh, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Please go ahead, find the file. Okay. Zero is written. Uh, the thing is, check is done based on the process, real ID, this is real ID, yeah, real ID. That's why it's not based on EUID. If UID, right, 
based on the effective UID, the board runs this set UID loop program, board can get loop privilege, and board doesn't need to perform this software. Okay, I mean like uh, safety part, it has to be ran. Right. But here, here, actually the check is done based on the processor's real UID. So, because uh, real UID, board needs to perform this software attack, Okay, then the check is done or not sensitive file. Okay, check should return of zero, means uh, permission is, is granted. Okay, but before not sensitive file is accessed, bot then try to swap upon the swap so that the one file that will be read is actually a sensitive system file. Okay, that, that's the role of, 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 of the attack in this kind of scenario. Okay, right, uh, well, that's it, some of uh, what I just mentioned. So, uh, well, the example of the parallel program, okay, uh, let's say the, where the checking is done, and then what is open, operator is done, and so on and so forth. So you can see, you know, see, see you right? Okay. So if you need to learn more about the access system call, you can read the main page on uh, access system call. Okay, so uh, what are the two files involved, right? Yeah, and yeah, let's say Bob is the matrix uh, user. Of course, free UID is Bob. Okay, my right to be a limitation number, I'm call it Bob. Then the effective UID is group. Suppose, suppose, right, there's this file name F. Okay, the non sensitive file name is this file. This file, as you can see, belongs to Bob. And of course, Bob has permission to change it. It's a different file. Okay? Ah, but then, but then, okay, after Bob, now the process, he really replaced, replaces the file with a symbolically into a sensitive file. Okay? Right? And the thing is, Bob actually does not have a write permission to the sensitive file. Okay, it's a normal by right. But okay, he still wants to change the file, right? In fact, we want to update his salary and so on. So he can Bob to that. Yeah, that is, right? There's a way to do that. By using talk to attack. Okay? And then this is what Bob need to do. You need to run these two operations by hand and run a script that you carry out, carry out actually the two steps. First of all, right, before the symbolic thing is, is, is created, okay, it is finally to be deleted first. Okay? And then after that, it creates a symbolic link using this index command. Okay, so, so basically now uh, this A1 for this EXT, we will basically point to this sensitive file. Right? And of course, uh, hopefully, uh, by the time the file is accessed, uh, sorry, by the time it's used, it will use, then the sensitive file will be the one to be read. As a result, Bob can actually read sensitive file. This one is not a system file, it's just a sensitive file. It belongs to, perhaps, it's a sensor. Yeah? Okay, so hopefully Bob, the back guy here, yeah, came in the red. Yeah, came in the red. Yeah, that's the way the set uh, the racing gun. So again, uh, this is just to recap how, how the events are uh, involved in this kind of scenario. You will see, and then Bob will perform the deletion and the symbolic integration so that then ultimately the time of you. This sensitive file is accessed. Okay? Right? Here's how the attack works. So, again, I don't really need to know the details, not really required this module, just for you to understand the, the threat. So, very important though uh, is for you to understand the defense mechanism. How can you avoid this kind of issue? Okay, let's see what developments. Okay, there are two different approaches, two different approaches. Okay? okay uh, C programming, right? The first one, okay, very important, avoid using separate system calls that take the same file name as its own. Meaning, actually, don't create condition where you have T or C and T or U, right? Two separate system calls, one is uh, executed at uh, T or C and the other one at T or U. So, don't adopt this dual system call approach, right? However, just open the file once, once, and the result file will be locked, 
and, and, and further access to the file, further changes will be blocked, and use the buy method. Right. So that, that, that's one way. A that is to be more concrete, don't use access as important. Right, we have seen how access is important can be dangerous. So rather open the file one using open system file, and then when you need to check, right, check the permission, use F tap system file. Okay. So uh, well, uh, separation, separation, first one, where you can use this uh, open, and then you can check F step, right, and then you can check the, 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 the output of F step, okay, when the permission is granted, operation is allowed, and after that you want to do your operations. But it needs to be safe because then you yeah, have basically program. Yeah, the handle the file and yeah, and then access to the cookies, uh, block and so on. Yeah, then that's one approach. Okay. Is, is that a, a good approach? It's a good approach, but uh, is it, is it uh, the best approach possible? Well, not really, not really. We can do better than that. There's a better approach available. This approach too. And then actually, we want to leave the checking to the underlying OS. But you do that after you appropriately set your process creation. What does it mean? Okay? Does it mean actually well okay let me give you an example using this program, right? Okay, uh, let's say you set your any root program, program run she run with an elevated GD like here. Okay, but you notice actually uh, for this file handling operation, right? Okay, you don't want actually the user to run with Elevated root privilege. What can you do? Yes, then you can lower the privilege set. Lower the privilege. You can use this set E or the command. Basically, you lower the privilege. Basically, if they put your ID from this point onward, will be U, not zero, not root, will be U, which means a real user ID. And let the user actually perform all the operations. Let the OS, underlying OS, actually check the permissions. Okay? If user can't really perform the operation, denied by the system, that's fine. Not the problemers worry, not the problemers burden, fine. Uh, let the OS handle it. But then, after this process, okay, after this operation, if, let's say, you need to actually elevate the, 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 the privilege again, well, you just do so, okay, this point, now the effective QID should be root again, uh, let the system handle again, uh, and, 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 and grab run all the excesses as necessary. Yeah, so this is the best option, the best uh, defense. Okay, in a way, you also want to the, 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 the actually implement uh, the, this privilege principle. Yeah, okay. And then let the OS check the permission and so on. And if you need, then you can just reset the value back to the output of This is the best option uh, given here, which you can adopt your programming side. Yeah. Okay, any any questions? Any questions on top to attack? Okay, uh, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now, now let's talk about preventive measures. We have discussed so many attacks yeah, in the past two weeks or three weeks. Let's talk about the defense mechanism. We're going to defend all your programs okay, against all these threats, okay, all these attacks. What can you do? Okay, you. Okay, first of all, before that, let me mention this. Yeah, actually, uh, there are many bugs around, and in general, it's difficult to ensure that your program is bug free. Okay, it's very, very difficult. Yeah, bugs are about to happen anyway. Well, no foolproof method. So, that's the, 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 the warning. However, nevertheless, yeah. There are various useful countermeasures that you can uh, adopt, and then the result of these uh, good practices uh, adopted, you can avoid many issues. Many issues. So here, okay, one in one countermeasure is this input validation. Okay, you have seen integer overflow, buffer overflow. What's the lesson there? Lesson never, ever, ever, ever trust user input. So if you receive a user report, what should you do? Well, perhaps you want to do filtering. Okay? 
right? For this is a lesson number one, and then of course there is this perform action number one. So you need to do carefully, right? If input not in an effective format, just reject it. It uh, to be not even the one that doesn't need to be. Yeah, reject it. Okay, um, uh, I'll, I'll be quite fast on this part. Uh, I'll highlight the important parts, important tenets, important lessons uh, on this defense part. Okay, but the problem is, it feels to me, right? Okay, that actually devising a complete filter is difficult. Filtering, yeah, can be done. But, okay, having a complete filtering is, is difficult. We have seen one example uh, with regard to this uh, UTF presentation, right? And how actually you're supposed to actually check the occurrence of dot dot size something in the user input, but because, let's say, multiple representations of dot dot size are uh, allowed, then your, your, your filters may be incomplete. So as a result, your, your filter can be bypassed. Okay, just one more one more okay, one more name. And then, in general, there are two ways, or two approaches of filtering. One is blacklist, the other one is black, oh, sorry, one, one is whitelist, second one is blacklist. What is a whitelist? In whitelist, you specify good values to be accepted. Okay? In blacklist, you specify bad entries to be rejected. Okay? Alright? And then, result of filtering is more secure. Who say blacklist? Oh, that list. Who say white list? Answer is white list. Why is this so? Again, uh, your list won't be complete, right? It won't be complete. What happens if they say you will drop that list of what? You have a black list. Okay, you have a black list. But your list is incomplete. So, okay, attackers can bypass your list. Bad entry to be rejected. But somehow a bad entry can pass through. What will happen to your system? Your system can get attacked and get attacked. Say, if let's say you adopt this wireless approach, okay, you specify all the good input to be, to be accepted, somehow you miss one entry. What will happen? Your good magic user will come to you. Hey, how come I can't use your, 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 your system? Uh? Uh, enter this and then reject it by the system. So good user will complain to you. Yeah, it's still alright, you can still be there, you can still live with that, you don't need to actually uh, include some extra entries in, in, in your files. Yeah. So why this is preferred, it's more secure from a security standpoint. Okay, uh, because of the variation. Any questions? Alright? Okay, so that's number one. Okay, number three. Number two, what could be the issue? Bubble or bubble, what's the lesson? Lesson. Okay, because you use insecure function like string copy. So adopt several versions of all the functions like string and copy, set the parameters properly, and then yeah, you can avoid on the issue, set the buffer of flow and so on and so on. Okay, right? Of course, uh, you need to set parameters correctly, otherwise string and copy can still lead to a parameter. And then we have discussed it in your tutorial. Okay, yes. Uh, lesson number two. Okay. Lesson number three. Performance checking and type setting. Okay, you do? Well, you have seen, right? Examples involving uh, flow. Let's say you have an array, and then actually, yeah, actually, uh, because of missing bound checking, your uh, array can be accessed beyond the, the valid indices. So, if let's say you have this. Assignment operation. If you want, you can perform bar checking operations at runtime. First, you check if okay, i is above the lower bound, check the index is, is, is uh, below the upper bound. Only after that, you perform your assignment operation. Okay, that should be set. Right? Okay, of course, problem is uh, there's a performance penalty, but then again, uh, you, you get the benefit of preventing power of flow. And then, yes, when you might say that probably the, the, the benefit can outweigh the, the, the cost. Why is that so? Well, because if you read this norm, right, you can see well how many entries buffer for flow, yeah, uh, due to simple uh, case of missing bar checking. So perhaps you want to adopt this bar checking mechanism 
if you want to be sure that yeah, your program can be free or above all the floor issue. At least the probability occurrence of above all can be reduced or minimized. Okay, uh, of course, the issue here is that C and C plus plus do not perform this one checking, and there are many pieces of software are written in C C plus plus. Here I don't have the last bullet point here, and then many programmers they can uh, use uh, insert new functions, they can use the word checking and so on and so forth, never filter user info and so on and so forth. So one for Google can happen. Right? So uh that's number three. Well, okay, you know about this poem, right? It's a famous computer scientist. He won this doing a work back in 1980. Actually, he called them C and C for, for the omission of performing bond checking. Why is that so? And you can see here, if any respectable brands of engineering failure to observe such elementary vocation, right? We have all been against the law. So they made calling to Paul, right? The designer of C, C++, yeah, but we work to justice <laughs> because of this lack of uh, precaution. Okay, but never mind, we need to live with it. As a result, we have to need to adopt all these available confirmations. Okay, so uh, well, related to this bar checking, there's this notion of type safety, type safety, and then this type safety can be done at one time, can be done at compile time, and so on. And bar checking, in fact, in the programming language theory, can be considered as a mechanism that ensures type safety. Why is that so? Well, I'll give you an example in Pascal here. We have written a functional program before. Let's say you want to do school assignment. Okay, say you find. Is this allowed? No. Pascal will say it's not allowed. And then, of course, because of the error in uh, bond checking. But you can say it's because of wrong type. How can you say this is a wrong type? You see? Okay, start here. Okay, I've highlighted this start in red. Type. Actually, range in this is range from 1 to 10. So, if let's say 0 is specified, uh, then no, no, it's a wrong part. Can you see that? Yeah, I'll just start in red. Okay, so as you can see then, oh, okay, I can see why this is uh, considered a uh, violation of, of this uh, type checking. Okay, so that's Okay, uh, what can you do next? Okay, uh, please give me <laughs> 4 minutes, right? Okay, calories. Calories is very important. Okay, now calories values, right? In certain, uh, some memory location at one time, at one time, right? At one time. Of course, the program can be generated with this option. So that at one time, value will be inserted into the call stack. Uh, calories value will be checked, and so on and so forth. And as a result, okay, right? Especially uh, stack overflow can be set matching can be uh, detected. Okay, by the way, I highlighted this word detect here in what isolate and underline. Why? It's very important. It's not to prevent powerful overflow, but just to detect powerful overflow. Very, 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 very important. Just to detect powerful overflow. And then if powerful overflow is detected, the program execution will be just aborted. Yeah, aborted. Okay, very important. To use secure several functions, you know, to prevent buffer overflow. But this canary here, she are used to detect buffer overflow. Right? Okay, how, how does it work? Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, this is, let's say, the location of the buffer. Attackers want to overflow this piece of information here. We put the canary here. Okay, so now, in our stack frame, our stack frame, right? Okay, this is the local variable. This can get overflow. Where do you want to put your canary? Here, can put it here. Why? Well, you want to protect, return address, and particularly also this frame function, right? Why is that so? Well, let's say there's an overflow. Guess what? Canary will also be overwritten, right? So if you put canary here, and then after a function implication, you check whether the canary is still intact, or whether the canary is, is, is uh, modified, then you can check whether uh, power of the law is a good. Okay, that's the way it works. Let me go back to this. Of course, again, canary value should be secret, right? Otherwise, the technical regime can, can, can actually uh, override what we accept value. Okay, and in fact, this mechanism is, is widely adopted now. If you use GCC, 
Okay, in Linux, the DDC compiler. Well, actually, by default, this stack protection mechanism is on. Yeah, the canary based stack protection mechanism is on. If you want to turn it off, yes, you can turn it off. Okay, you can specify this uh, flag when popping DDC. Okay, uh, let me complete this part. Yeah. Well, actually, what is called canary and uh, some history with, with this canary bird used uh, by miners in the past. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me see that. Okay, so uh, let's say I do have one example here. Yeah, I do have this program. I do have this program. Okay, text 15 characters, right? And then I have this line here. Let's say, let's say, I run it, I run it uh, in a program, uh, I provide a supply, this is a log suite, which then can overflow, can overflow this text array. Okay. With the stack protector, what can you get? What kind of behavior on the program that you get? Then you get this information here. Sex messaging detected and program aborted. Interestingly, man is exiting is still there. That means this statement or operation still run by the program, right? Why? Because you can have this check, yeah, when function uh, or after function actually exits, only after function exits. So this function is vulnerable, very vulnerable, okay? The overflow happens here, right? But still program will continue, so you still can see that man is exiting, is uh, created by the program. Only after man exits, canary will check, okay, canary is not intact, and the result, uh, the stack protection mechanism will, will tell you, sex message detected, program gets terminated. But you will still see this. Okay, if, if you turn off the stack protector, what will you get? Same thing. Man is exiting, it is still there, but straight away you see this segment is involved. So you see, okay, uh, you can see actually the one, the set protector actually make the termination uh, slightly nicer because the information regarding sex smashing attack detected uh, is shown, but I can see both execution are aborted. What's the big deal here? What's the big deal? What's the main benefit of using set protector? Okay, uh, you can see here the benefit. But this is very something very, very important, right? You get this segmentation port here, okay, when the stack protector is off, simply because written address point is invalid instruction address. If attacker is clever, right? He has written address, yeah, okay, is written with a valid value, and then the extreme port can get directed. Guess what? The overflow program will resume the execution. In fact, shareboard, injected shareboard can be executed. But over here, straight away, after the final program, final function exits, canary is checked, okay, canary is corrupted, straight away, then program will be aborted. Wow, well, so because of that, this always enable your shareboard system. Yeah, very clear, this part. I hope this part is clear. And to make it even clearer, now I do have uh, this program. Now, this is the vulnerable function. Copy this is a vulnerable function. And then of course, copy this function is called for main. Okay, all right. This is the operation, or the invocation of function. Again, I have two lines here. Function is exiting here, and then it's exiting here. This one, do you think this will be executed? Yeah? Yes, it will be executed. How about this one? Main is exiting. Do you think this line will be executed? No, right? You won't see this output. Well, because right after this copy this, canary will be checked, and if a flow occurs, then program will terminate here. Okay, I'm about it here. So you can see this line, but you won't be able to see this line. Okay, I have the sample output, right? Which stack protector? Again, you can see that the stack matching detected, program will get aborted, function is exiting there. But when it's exiting, you will can't see this. Right? Same thing here. Function is exiting is outputted. When it's exiting, it's not outputted. And you can see segmentation form. But again, 
very important. This happens because the written address happens to be an invalid address. Yeah. Okay. Uh, over here, no matter what, valid invalid address, uh, still program will get terminated because canary is corrupted. So this is a must uh, have approach because it really checks whether sex matching uh, occurred. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, and then the last one, uh, I've discussed this, this is my last slide for today. I've discussed this, actually then uh, the attacker can adopt this so called not set any, yeah, to improve uh, his chances of jumping into the right target address so that executable code setup can be run. But again, to defend against, uh, to make this hard, to, to make this task much more difficult, what can you do? As a defender, we can perform memory randomization. And then, just now, uh, we have mentioned about SLR. So it's a common technique for address, address space layout randomization, where actually then uh, the address space position right of key data areas get randomized. Say, for example, the, the, the stack segment, yeah, the uh, beginning address of your call stack, we get randomized. As a result, very difficult for the takers to pinpoint the target address to jump, right? And then as a result, this will make things, uh, the, the mechanism will make the takers job harder, and hopefully, you can't really execute the injected sample. Okay, uh, for inspection, I'll continue next week. Okay, uh, for inspection, you know, right? How we work, right? We yeah, how we work. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Okay, uh, continue next week uh, together with our discussion of web security uh, in our last lecture next week. Okay, so please come to your last lecture. Uh, also, please talk a bit about your final exam. Okay, in the meantime, don't forget to actually work on, on your assignment and take a look at the release of uh, Illuminus online assessment. And then